Welcome back everyone. So we're gonna jump right back into our lore series we're doing in the Strad. Since we are still currently on the plane, um, I'm gonna keep going with some very influential characters that have you know some really cool stories about them. But before I get into that, like always, if you like my videos, please go ahead, hit that like button down below. If you enjoy my content, want to see more please hit the subscribe button helps out the channel a lot and then if you also want to be notified whenever new videos come out please feel free to hit that bell icon down below it doesn't bite sometimes maybe a full moon <laughs> anyways let's get right back into it today so we're gonna be talking about probably one of the other most you know influential characters on the planet of Innistrad, and that is Sigarda, host of Herons. Now, for those who don't know, you know, we all know Sigarda as the green white angel within all the sets we've seen. Uh, for those who don't know about Sigarda, so Sigarda's history is she is one of the four um, main angels of Innistrad, older than even Avicen herself. Now, each main, each four sisters, what they were called, kind of were the leaders of which were called. Uh, flights and they were the host of the flight now you have uh, Gazella or sorry Gisela Bruna uh, Sigarda and then Lysella now Gisela was more about the combat oriented style of things she wanted to take the fight to the monsters themselves while Bruna was more there to help the living pass you know go and help the living pass into spirits and everything like that and then Lysa, her job was basically, she was kind of the intermediate intermediate between, you know, demons and creatures of the night and the angels. So those were all their territories. And then you have Sigarda, who is also known as the host of Herons. Now, Sigarda's job was to watch over humanity, you know, the human population on Innistrad and protect them as well as guide them. At least until Addison showed up. So... When Avacyn come shows up, uh, all the angels recognize her as a powerful figure and a leader. Sigarda being one of them as well. Now, one thing Sigarda never approved of was Avacyn killing, killing Lysela because she would deal with demons. Avacyn didn't want any part of that because Avacyn was pure white mana pure uh looked at the darkness as, as that was her job she had to destroy anything that would threaten the human population on innistrad so sigarda didn't care for that part but she still respected avison's power and her position as she became kind of this figure within the industry within innistrad and sigarda was cool with that Right now, when Avicen disappeared, Sigarda still kept doing her duties as the host of her flight and kept protecting humans as much as she could. Now, she wasn't the best at it because you know a lot of the magic that was created during Avicen's time had slowly disappeared while Avicen was locked away in the Hell Vault. But we all know Avicen got out of the Hell Vault and things started looking better on Innistrad better until about two years after Avison's return so around two years after Avison returned from the hell got uh, you know became free of the hell vault we're gonna keep it going here about two years after that happened is when the stuff around that started happening with Emrakul and the kind of kind of madness that Emrakul coming towards Innistrad was bringing now, Sigarda didn't know about Nahiri and her plans and didn't realize this was her plans for vengeance against Sorin. Um, but Sigarda was one of the only angels who was not corrupted, like Avicen, uh, Gisela, and Bruna. So, basically what happens is during that time, because this is kind of where, where, where Sigarda starts kind of seeing more spotlight, getting more, becoming more of a main figure during 
Shadows of Arnestrad, and Eldritch Moon. During that time period, Avacyn, before she starts kind of going on this, you know, basically execution and eradication of humanity, goes to each of the hosts, you know, Bruna, Giz uh, Giz Gisela, trying to, trying to combine their names, like the monstrosity they become. Uh, she goes to each of them and tells them we need, you know, they're being affected by this, you know, madness as well. And they decide we're going to join Avacyn in her, you know, eradication of humans. Well, they go to Sagarda and basically tells us, tell Sagarda, you need to join us. And Sagarda says, no, because that's Sagarda's purpose is to protect humanity. She was born of Innistrad for that sole purpose. That was how she became a being and how she became the host of her, of her flight. Now, she stood up against Avacyn at that time before she Avacyn was fully corrupted and basically told, told her, I will not fight and I will not hurt humans because that is not my way and that is not your way. Well, Avacyn didn't take that very, you know, kindly. So Avacyn blew the roof off her house. Legitimately just blew the roof off the house and said, fine, if you don't fight, if you get in our way, you'll die. And Sagarda says, okay. And Sagarda kind of at that point is helping the humans as much as she can. Um, it isn't until around the final battle when she really gets involved in what's going on. So during the final battle with Emmer Cole, you know, and this is at all at Thurbane, uh, when Emrakul summoned to Thurbane into the physical world, per se. Um, you know, they're fighting, and then you have Gazella and Bruna basically meld together. Uh, she was not present during the, you know, when Soren destroyed Avacyn. She was not present, but she felt the disappearance because, you know, it was such a strong presence just vanishing from the world. S excuse me. Bless, bless my heart. <laughs> so she goes and fights in this final battle with Thalia and all the Cathars and and all them. And she goes there and she sees what her sisters have become, the monster her sisters have become. And so she actually helps, um, helps Thalia defeat her sisters, her own sisters, her own what she considers flesh and blood at this at this point. And this doesn't actually break, you know, Sagarda. She doesn't wallow in sadness. She understands that they were not themselves, but they needed to be put out of their misery because there's no turning back at the point they became. Now let's cut to current storyline within, you know, L, uh, within the Midnight Hunt. So we all know in Midnight Hunt right now, at this point, the world has kind of changed. Uh, Avacyn is no longer around. The sun and the the, uh, the the nights are becoming longer. Days are becoming shorter. The moon is becoming full faster. You know, things are changing and people know it. Well, Zagar is still there. She's still protecting people and sex of the original Church of Avacyn have actually broken off and started worshipping Sigarda as their protector, which she is. Uh, a lot of the original Cathars have made themselves, you know, fashion themselves as Sigardian um, priests and stuff like that. Uh, and then the religion itself has changed in Innistrad around her because it went from being this more grandiose, uh, centrally focused the seat of power was in Thurbane, it was the, the, the Lunark, and then the Lunark Council, which Lunark Council is still technically there, but they're, they don't have the power they had originally. Um, things have become a lot more like rural, and people are starting to worship more within their own communities, instead of these giant grandiose churches, because they've seen what's happened. You know, they've had demons completely you know, take over you know, holy sites. So people have become more knit, tight knit and, and wanting to protect themselves. So 
Sigarda has taken up that role to be their protector, to watch over these people and to help them. Now, in the story, current storyline, Sigarda has a pretty f fun scene, I think. Um, pretty much what happens is you have Arland, uh, Teferi, Chandra, as well as uh, the new Cathar, I forgot her name off the top of my head. They are trying to find the Moon Silver Key, which is supposed to be this ancient relic um, that will help them fix the, what's going on, help them fix the, the cycle. I haven't done too much research into the Moon Silver Key, but they know that Soren has it. Soren being one of the oldest beings on Innistrad, one of the strongest on Innistrad. Well, Arlen and this other Cathar kind of pray to Sigarda for guidance and everything, which she hears. So she hears them praying, you know, before they enter Markov Manor. Well, Edgar, not Edgar, Soren at this time, is kind of wallowing in his own self-pity. Um, you know, he, his home is destroyed. His, you know, his, almost his entire bloodline is completely wiped out because of uh, Nahiri. And he had to destroy his greatest creation. So he's wallowing his own self-pity. Uh, and basically, you know, you have Teferi and Arland and uh, Chandra and this other Cathar saying, we need this item you have. We need it to protect and fix things. And Soren is just kind of giving up all hope. He's like, I don't care anymore. Everything I've done to protect this plane has gone up in smoke. What do you want me to do? You want the key? I don't know. You can't have the key because I don't feel like it. So he just kind of goes to this weird phase where he just gives up all hope of protecting his plane. And at that point, Sigarda gets comes in there. I'm going to condense what happens. But basically, Sigarda comes into Barkov Manor and berates Soren. Basically berates him and calling him basically a big child because... Things didn't work out the way he planned because he created things and had to destroy things. And she just lays into this man and it is the best. It is just truly chef's kiss, true chef's kiss right there. Um, that's kind of where we left off with her in the current storyline. We should hopefully be getting some more of her coming up in Crimson Vow. But tell me what you guys think down in the comment section below. Like I always say, leave a comment, tell me if there's any kind of legendary creature you want me to cover, any planeswalkers you guys want me to cover. I'm eventually going to start covering more, um, but right now I'm really kind of focusing on Innistrad because that's where we are, and I think it's got some of the coolest lore. Definitely going to be covering Kamigawa when it comes out, because I do love the Kamigawa lore. I think it's super, it's super interesting. Um, it's technically older then like the plane itself is actually older than uh we think it is be considering uh the time that we were in kamigawa was actually before like the brothers war and stuff and it's actually really interesting so once we get to kamigawa we'll go more into that but right now i want to know what you guys think let me know in the comment section down below as always guys play more games